In this video, we will explain step by step everything related to the free version of the Yoast SEO plugin. Activate the Yoast SEO plugin. This plugin is probably the best and most popular plugin for search engine optimization of WordPress websites. It has over 5 million active installations and a perfect rating. After successful activation, you will receive information that your website is already easier to find for search engines. This is because the default settings of Yoast SEO plugin are extremely good and allow a great improvement already after installation. However, in order to achieve excellent SEO results, it will take a lot of effort. In the main menu on the left, there is a Yoast SEO option and it has several items. Let's go in order, first, we'll explain the general. If you see this critical problem, you need to select the reading option in the settings section, and then uncheck search engine visibility in it. Yoast SEO has signaled through this notification that your website is not visible to search engines and that it is necessary to change the settings. We will agree that this is really a blocker issue, because if you don't make these changes, everything else is irrelevant, because you wouldn't exist for Google. Change the settings and solve this problem. The next notification directs us to do SEO data optimization. There are no special actions here, you just need to click the button and wait for the optimization process to be finished. The last notification in the first tab of the general part is to upgrade to the premium version. Of course, like any plugin, Yoast SEO allows some features in the premium version. Take a look at what's included in this version and consider whether you need it. The first time configuration tab takes you step by step through some settings, it doesn't take much time, so we'll go through this part. The first step is actually what we did a little while ago, it refers to optimization and for this step we see clear information that we can move on to the next step. Now, you need to choose whether your website is of organizational or personal type. By default, the website name will be the site name you defined at the website level, and the same value will be for the organization name. If the name of your website differs from the name of the site, enter the changes. For the organization logo, by default, the logo icon is drawn from the site, but this can be easily changed by selecting another image in the media library. If you choose person type, there will be only one different field, instead of organization name in the drop-down list you should choose the name of the user. Here, you should select the user that is the person that the website represents from the available user accounts on your website. Their user profile information will now be used in search results. So, make sure that the information in the user profile in the WordPress settings is up to date and correct. The username that is shown in the drop down menu and which will be outputted is that the display name publicly as name from the user profile. We return to the organization and save the changes in order to move on to the next step. Adding links to social profiles can be useful. In the next step, Yoast SEO offers you to enter your email address for the newsletter. If you want to go deep into the SEO topic, subscribe, it will be useful. Also, if you want to help this plugin to improve its services by providing anonymous data, you can do it by selecting the Yes option. In the last step, you can click on the link to see how to improve your SEO ranking. The second big part is the settings and there are a lot of options in it. In the site features part there are many features and for each of them there is a clear explanation. We won't go through everything, as we think the default setting is great. Before we continue, we will explain what SEO title and SEO description are. It is necessary to know these terms in order to understand the rest of the tutorial. In the Google search results, for each item four data are displayed. These are, site name, URL, SEO title and SEO description of the page. Site name we don't need to explain too much, 
it's the name of the site. Search engines want your URL structure to be relevant and explain what your page is about. In the URL you need to use keywords and phrases that are relevant and that are going to allow your page to be recognized by search engines. SEO title is a page element that denotes the title of a page. This title is shown in a search results and web browser tab. When you create it, it is important that it contains keywords for which you want your page to be highly positioned, and it is also important that it motivates the user to click on the search result. The optimal length of the SEO title should be between 40 and 60 characters. The SEO description should contain up to 160 characters and this element serves only for a longer explanation of the pages. Also, it is necessary to have keywords, but it is not good to exaggerate in their use. It is important to note that the URL, SEO title and SEO description are defined for each page separately, so if you have 10 pages on your website, you will have the same number of these elements. We return to the plugin settings. The website name is filled by default with the value previously defined in the WordPress settings. You can change it, but you probably won't need to. It is useful to fill in the alternative website name by entering an acronym or a shorter site name. Google might show either your website name or your alternate website name in the search results, depending on the query and the length of your site's name. Taglines call to mind an image of the brand. It's nice to define it. Here, you can choose how the SEO title separator will look like. In the rest of this tutorial it will become clearer to you what a separator is, but for now it is useful to know that the SEO title structure can be defined automatically and in that case a separator is displayed between several automatically generated elements. The site image set here will be used for pages and blog posts for all pages that do not have an image defined. The recommended, optimal size is 1200 times 675 pixels. There are two switches in site preferences. We talked about one earlier. It refers to Yoast SEO's permission to collect data to improve the plugin and we will leave it turned off. The second option, which is on by default, prevents authors from accessing advanced settings. If you want to change that and allow authors to access this type of setting, you need to disable this option. The last section is available in the premium version. We have already explained the site representation part, so there is no need to go through it again. Site connections allow you option to verify your site with different tools. Each search engine has a tool that gives you feedback on how your site is doing in their search results, and that tells you how these search engines perceive your website. Baidu's tool is called Webmaster Tools, as other tools of Bing and Yandex, and Google has Google Search Console. Here, you can verify your site with the respective tools. You can do that by entering a little piece of code that the tools generate for you. In order to get the necessary verification codes, you need to open the links below the input field. Of course, you have to decide for yourself which tool is important for your website. There are five subpages in the content type section. In the homepage part, we have links that take us to the page that we have set to be our homepage and blog page. By entering these pages, we open the part where SEO is set for a separate page. We will explain this in detail in the rest of this tutorial. In the post part, it is necessary to define the structure of the SEO title and description. By default, the SEO title structure is set so that the page title is printed first, then the separator whose style we defined earlier, and then the website title which is set for us at the website level. So, dynamically based on the variables, the SEO title structure is already predefined, and you can easily change that by adding variables here for SEO title or here for SEO description. Of course, you can manually define the SEO title and description for each page on your website, we will show later how. But if you don't define anything manually, what you have set here will be used to dynamically generate the SEO title and description. We will briefly show how this definition affects some of our pages. We will open the gallery page for which we haven't defined anything manually so far and see how the SEO title and description of this page looks based on the default settings. 
Gallery is the name of this page, followed by a separator in the form of a dash and after that the name of the website, which in our case is Beauty Salon. We didn't have any variables defined for the description, so this field is empty and needs to be filled in manually. Dynamic definition of SEO title and description can be done in the same way for other types, such as posts, products and so on. The same logic, but different variables are used for the post category page, product category page, post tags, product tags and product shipping classes. If you think that something needs to be changed or added, do it. In the advanced part, we have eight subsections. Crawl optimization gives you optimize your crawl settings to make your site more efficient and to reduce your site's carbon footprint. Breadcrumbs determine what your breadcrumbs will look like. Author archives enable or disable author archives and determine what they look like in the search results and on social media platforms. Date archives enable or disable date archives and determine what they look like in the search results and on social media platforms. It is similar for the archives format. Special pages set templates for your internal search pages and your 404 error pages. Media pages determine whether you want to redirect attachment URLs to the attachment itself. RSS add links back to your site at the end of each blog post showing the original source of the article. The next big part is integrations. Here, we see recommended integrations such as SEMrush and Wincher, and by clicking on Learn More you can see more details related to these integrations. Also, there are more schema API integrations and plugin integrations. Do your research and decide if any of these would be useful for your website. The tool settings contain a number of different tools that you can use when you're importing and exporting settings or redirects, when you want to edit your .taxis file or robots.txt file, or when you're doing bulk work to your site. You can find these tools listed on this settings page of the plugin. The Academy section is intended for all those who want to increase their SEO knowledge. Here you have a lot of courses and materials regarding SEO. In the premium part, you can see all the benefits of the paid version of the Yoast SEO plugin. There are a lot of useful benefits, and it's up to you to decide do you need them and will you buy the premium version or not. Workouts and redirects are part of the premium version and they are locked until the premium version is purchased. The last but not the least option is support. Here you can find answers to some of the most common questions, or if you don't find what you need there, the next step is additional resources, such as the help center and support forum. Earlier, we already explained how you can manually define the SEO title and description of your pages, product, posts, and so on, and now we will explain probably the biggest benefit of the Yoast SEO plugin. It is an SEO analysis drop-down where we can easily see how well we have done SEO for a certain page. All the essential SEO segments of a page are shown here. Each item is clearly explained, and you know how good you are based on the color-coded points. Green means that you are excellent at a certain thing, orange means that you are not completely good, and red means that you are bad. It is clear that for top SEO results you need to dedicate time to each page separately and make an effort to keep all these things green. There are several more options at the page level, so we will explain them. Cornerstone content is the core of your website. It consists of the best, most important articles on your site, the pages or posts you want to rank highest in the search engines. Cornerstone articles are usually relatively long, informative articles, combining insights from different blog posts and covering everything that's important about a certain topic. 
In the advanced part you have several options, all of them are clearly explained and based on that you can decide whether you want to change something or not. Insights is part of the premium version. If you found the video useful, don't forget to like and subscribe.